You will surely agree that even though there are many things that man gives importance to in this world, what man values most is the life he possesses. But even though there is no question that it is truly very important, there is something that we should treasure and love even more dearly. In this episode, we will show you by means of the Holy Scriptures what that is. But let us share this first with our friends and viewers, Brother Edwell. Why do we say that death and judgment are two problems faced by all people? Well, to answer that question, we need to, of course, read from the Holy Scriptures. And friends, what I'm going to read is recorded here in the book of Psalms. I'm going to share with you here what's written in chapter 89. The verses are 48 and also verse 47. What man can live and not see death? Can he deliver his life from the power of the grave? Remember how short my time is. For what futility have you created all the children of men? The problem that everyone faces based on what we read is death. And why is it a problem? Well, because not only is man's time here short, also, according to the Bible, no one can deliver his life from the power of the grave. So even if one is young, educated, or not rich or poor, no one on his own can escape from the power of death. Yes. But what further aggravates man's problems concerning death? Well, again, to answer that question, let's go back to what the Bible teaches. This time, dear friends, we're going to turn to the book of Ecclesiastes. I'm going to read to you chapter 9, the verse is 12. You never know when your time is coming. Like birds suddenly caught in a trap, like fish caught in a net, we are trapped at some evil moment when we least expect it. Friends, what aggravates man's problem concerning death is the fact that, well, based on what we just read, man doesn't know when death is going to come, when his life is going to be taken from him. And according also to the Holy Scriptures, to what is man likened when death comes? Well, man is no different, friends, from an animal when trapped at some evil moment he least expects. This is why if one knew beforehand that he would meet an accident, for example, or lose his life in a certain place, then you would agree with us. That person would certainly never go to that place. But others might say, Brother Edel, well, that's exactly the reason we do all we possibly can to safeguard our life. We devote all our time, our strength, our efforts to amassing earthly riches, which we believe would secure our life. Bredo, is that thinking in accordance with the teachings of the Holy Scriptures? Is that thinking correct that earthly riches or material riches would truly secure one's life? Well, before we answer that, of course, we have nothing against taking care of oneself, one's health, making sure that as much as is humanly possible, we stay away from accidents and, or anything that might hurt us. That's true. But... The Bible doesn't say, the Bible doesn't teach that if you amass material wealth, then that means you've already taken care of your life. What and is we can, that? Well, we can prove it by reading from the book of Ecclesiastes once again. Friends, I'm going to turn now to chapter 5, verse 15. We leave this world just as we entered it, with nothing. In spite of all our work, there is nothing we can take with us. If you notice, based on what we read, material riches... Well, these would not truly secure our life because these cannot really prevent the coming of death. In fact, in spite of all our work, according to the Bible, there is nothing we can take with us. There is no benefit from all these material things when death finally comes. So it's wrong for anyone to work hard only for the things of this life or only for amassing earthly riches. Yes. Aside from death, what is another great problem faced by all people. Well, we mentioned it at the beginning of our discussion. Mm -hmm. We all face death, and another great problem faced by people is judgment. Mm -hmm. So let's read about that. Here is the testimony, dear friends, of the Apostle Paul, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the verses 10. For all of us must appear before Christ to be judged by Him. Each one will receive what he deserves according to everything he has done, good or bad, in his bodily life. Friends, a day will come when all of us must appear before the Lord Jesus Christ. And why is that? Based on what the Apostle Paul t told us, it's to be judged by him. It's in order to receive what we each deserve. But our friends may ask, how will a person be judged by our Lord Jesus Christ 
for everything that person has done if he is already dead. Well, that person is going to be uh, brought back to life before he is to be judged before the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's read about that. It's recorded in the book of John. Friends, I'm going to read to you chapter 5. The verses are 28 down to 29. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth. Those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of condemnation. It's not impossible for any of us to be judged by our Savior, by the Lord Jesus Christ, for everything we have done, even though at that time we may already be dead. And why do we say it's not impossible? It's because a time is going to come when, according to the Lord Jesus Christ Himself, those in their graves will come forth. But what is the equivalent of this word, Edward? Well, the meaning of that, the equivalent of that is that there is going to be a day of resurrection. Resurrected to what? Well, there will be those who will be resurrected to life or to salvation. Others are going to be resurrected in order to be condemned. Condemnation. Let us be more specific, Brad. What condemnation that awaits those who have done evil in the sight of the Lord God? Well, that condemnation or that judgment as well as the consequences of that judgment, they're recorded in the book of Revelation. Chapter 20, dear friends, I'm going to read to you verses 12 down to 14. And I saw the dead, great and small alike, standing before the throne. Books were opened, and then another book was opened, the book of the living. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. Then the sea gave up its dead. Death and the world of the dead also gave up the dead they held. And all were judged according to what they had done. Then death and the world of the dead were thrown into the lake of fire. Friends, the condemnation awaiting those who have done evil, well, that's the second death based on what we just read. And that is also the eternal punishment in the lake of fire. And this makes death and judgment the two gravest problems of man. Yes. Friends, will earthly things or material riches that many people today treasure and work hard for solve these problems? Well, sadly, no. No, how about one's loved ones? Again, no. Why is that? It is because they too are faced with the same problems. So what then do we all need? We all need the true church introduced by the Holy Scriptures or established by our Lord Jesus Christ. But we're sure our friends are asking this. What is the relevance of the true church established or built by our Lord Jesus Christ to man's predicament when it comes to facing death and judgment. Well, the Lord Jesus Christ Himself, He speaks of His church, and He has something very important to say about it. In the book of Matthew, in chapter 16, the verse is 18. I'm going to read those words of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I tell you, Peter, you are a rock, and on this rock foundation I will build my church, and not even death will ever be able to overcome it. The relevance of the church established by the Lord Jesus Christ to man's predicament, well, it can be found in the promise of the Savior Himself concerning His true church. And what is the promise of our Lord Jesus Christ to His church? Well, He said that death itself is not going to be able to overcome His church. Therefore, the solution to man's problem of death is through the church introduced by the Holy Scriptures or established by our Lord Jesus Christ, which... He calls my church. Yes. Now let's turn to the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. What did the apostles also teach concerning the solution to man's problem of death? Well, the apostle Paul, for example, let's take what he said. It's recorded, dear friends, here in the book of 1 Corinthians. I'm going to read to you chapter 15, the verses 22. For just as all people die because of their union with Adam, in the same way all will be raised to life because of their union with Christ. The apostles taught us that the only solution to man's problem of death is for man to have union with the Savior, with the Lord Jesus Christ. But we would like to clarify, does this mean that those who have union with the Savior, with our Lord Jesus Christ, does this mean that they will not pass away? Well, the Bible doesn't teach that. Mm -hmm. What the Bible teaches is that if even a servant of the Lord God passes away, such will be raised back to life because of that person's union 
with the Savior, with the Son of the Lord God, the Lord Jesus Christ. So all of us need to have union with our Lord Jesus Christ. If we want to solve that twin problem of death and judgment. That's right, Brother Edel. But friends, you may be asking, how can one be in union? How can one be united with our Lord Jesus Christ? Well, before we continue with our discussion, Brother Kirby Light of Southwest Houston in the United States of America will share with us how he found a way by which he can be assured of the grace of salvation and eternal life on the Day of Judgment. Kirby Lied is getting ready for another day as a paramedic in Houston, Texas. It may start out as a routine, but he never knows what the day will bring. A typical day for me starts in the morning. Uh, we check out the truck and uh, get prepared to uh, respond to an emergency call. And just as I never know when that uh, alarm is going to go off and I'm going to have to respond to an emergency call, it, it's the same for, for the, our victims. They never know when, when they're going to need our services. Medic 3, go ahead. As a paramedic, he's been exposed to life's frailty. I've seen people in the prime of their life uh, taken in the blink of an eye. On a daily basis, I'm confronted with uh, people who don't realize until it's too late the importance of their salvation. But uh, that's what has um, strengthened my faith and uh, made me dedicated and realized that the importance of establishing that strong faith in relationship with God. Brother Kirby is a member of the Iglesian Cristo Church of Christ from the Southwest Houston Congregation. When he was first introduced to the church, he was quite surprised by what he saw and what he felt. My initial impression of the church was the level of orderliness and solemnity that's observed during each worship service. Many of the other churches I attended, you were bombarded with uh, too many distractions that uh, took away from the meditative atmosphere that I feel is necessary to, uh, to really get close to God during a personal prayer. The more he listened to the teachings in the Iglesia Cristo, the more convinced he became about where he belonged. My decision to take the final step and join the Church of Christ was based on my inability to find any holes in the doctrine that were being taught to me. Every other church I'd attended, there was always something that left a question or a doubt in my mind and uh, never became answered. But in the Church of Christ, everything I was being taught came straight from the Bible. and. I had no doubts and no questions once all the lessons were taught to me. Although he is faced with death on a regular basis, being a member of the church has made him stronger and unafraid of what life may bring. Being confronted on a daily basis with uh, so much uh, death and tragedy really gives one a, a, a sense that they're you really need to secure your salvation now before it's too late. Um, so many times, you know, the young and the old alike, you, you, you know, see them uh, taken away before they get a chance to, to find that salvation, find that security. And uh, it, at that point, it's too late. There's nothing they can do. Since I became a member of the Church of Christ, every facet of my life has changed for the better. It's hard to put into words the positive impact of having that assurance of faith and the protection of the Holy Spirit in your life. Uh, I no longer have the lingering doubts of my chances of salvation.
Bredel, one important thing that really caught my attention is the invitation of Brother Kirby to secure salvation before it's too late. He said that because he knows that when the Lord God takes away the life we possess or when the day of judgment comes, that we have not performed our duties to the Lord God or that we have not found the way by which we can be assured of receiving eternal life on the day of judgment, well, that would be too late if one strives on the day of judgment. Well, I agree wholeheartedly with uh, what he said that we should secure salvation before mm -hmm. it's too late because, of course, no right-thinking person would ever say no to salvation if he can be assured of it now. Indeed. So we should not put it off uh, any longer if we are being offered the grace of salvation. And of course, to partake of that grace, one should be in union with the Lord Jesus Christ, according to the Apostle Paul. And that leads us back to the question we left a while back. How can one be united or have union with our Lord Jesus Christ? Is it enough to say that one is already united with our Lord Jesus Christ or has a personal relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ simply because one has accepted Jesus as Lord and personal Savior? Well, of course, again, we're going to say that we, uh, of course, have nothing against people saying, I have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Lord, He is the personal Savior in my life. However, a person should not stop at that. A person should make sure that what he is saying is truly based on what the Bible teaches. And the Apostle Paul, he explains to us just who these people are who truly have a union or have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he tells us about it in the book of Ephesians, dear friends. I'm going to read to you chapter 5. The verses I'm going to read are verses 32. And let me also read verses 23 down to 24. This is a great mystery. I'm talking about Christ's relationship to the church. The husband is the head of his wife as Christ is the head of the church. It is His body. He is the Savior. As the church is under Christ's authority, so wives are under the authority of their husband's authority in everything. Friends, one can have a genuine relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ only by means of the true church. Now, you may be asking, why is that? Well, if you remember what the Apostle Paul said, if you noticed, it's because the true church is the one that has a true relationship or a true union with the Lord Jesus Christ, with the Savior. But how is the true church related to our Lord Jesus Christ? Well, based again on what the Apostle Paul said, the true church is under the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The true church is the body. It is the spouse of the Savior. And the true church is that which He will save. So it is utterly wrong for anyone to just claim that he has union or he has a personal relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ simply because one has accepted Jesus as his Lord and personal Savior. That's wrong. Friends, may we ask you, don't we all want a genuine relationship with the Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ? Don't we also want to be resurrected to eternal life? If so, we need to seek, we need to enter the true church introduced by the Bible and built by our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, aside from maintaining membership inside the true church until the very end, during our time or during the Christian era, is there any other way by which we can be resurrected to eternal life? Well, before we answer that, of course, from the Holy Scriptures, we would like to first call the attention of our friends. It has never been our doctrine that the church is the one that's going to save a person. No, mm -hmm. the Lord Jesus Christ is the one appointed by the Father to be the Savior of all those that the Father wants to be saved. That's true. However, we cannot get around the fact that the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior, He is going to save only His body or His true church. Now, is there any other way for man to receive that grace of salvation, the grace of eternal life, other than through the church? Well, dear friends, I'm going to read to you what's recorded. Here in 1 John chapter 5, the verses are 11 down to 12. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in His Son. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Well, we hope, dear friends, that you again notice that aside from maintaining membership in the true church, of course, until the very end, well, there's no other way by which man can be resurrected to eternal life because based on what the Apostle John testifies to, 
only those who have the Son or have the Lord Jesus Christ, only they have life. But what is it that has the Son, our Lord Jesus Christ? Well, if our friends remember from the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 18, it's His church. Only the church has the Son or the Lord Jesus Christ. And since the true church is the body of our Lord Jesus Christ and He is its head, what then is the name of the true church built and headed by the Lord Jesus Christ? The apostles, they call it the church of Christ. Let's read about that, dear friends, in the book of Acts, chapter 20, the verse is 28. You are now shepherds of the church of Christ, which he bought with his own life. Friends, the apostles introduced the true church built by the Savior, and they call it the church of Christ. It's in this church wherein all of us must enter for us to have a genuine relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's in this church to which we all must belong for us to be included among those who will be resurrected to eternal life when the end comes. So the only solution, Brother Edwell and their friends, to the twin problems of death and judgment is to enter and remain steadfast members of the true church until the very end, whether the end of this world or the end of our life, whichever comes first. Now, who is an example given by the Holy Scriptures of one who truly valued membership inside the true church, and how did he prove it? Well, we can give, for example, the Apostle Paul. We can cite him as an example, and this is what he said that to prove that he truly valued his membership in the true church. In the book of Philippians chapter 3, the verses are 13 down to 14. Here is what the Apostle Paul had to say to all of us. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. An example of one who valued membership in the true church was, of course, the Apostle Paul. And what did he say to us? Well, if we were to quote him, he said, I press on toward the goal. And how did Apostle Paul prove that he really pressed on toward the goal? Well, if we were to read from other verses of the Bible, we know that the Apostle Paul, he continued, dear friends, until the very end of his life. He was able to finish the race mentioned in the Holy Scriptures. So if Apostle Paul could do that for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, and for the sake of his membership inside the true church, then friends, one who wishes, one who truly wishes to follow his example should do the same. But what if someone says that although he truly desires to join the true church introduced by the Holy Scriptures, but according to him, he cannot because of the many worries, troubles, and problems of this life that he has to deal with? Well, in order to answer that question, we simply have to go back to the book of Philippians again. The testimony of the Apostle Paul. A while back we were reading from chapter 3. Now we go to chapter 4. Friends, the verses are 5 down to 6, as well as verse 19. Show a gentle attitude toward everyone. The Lord is coming soon. Don't worry about anything, but in all your prayers, ask God for what you need. Always asking Him with a thankful heart. And with all His abundant wealth, through Christ Jesus... My God will supply all your needs. Did you notice what the Apostle Paul said, dear friends? There is a promise made to the members of the true church. And this promise should convince all of us that we shouldn't worry, no matter how great the difficulty, no matter how great the suffering or even the poverty, the financial hardships we may be experiencing for the sake of entering and remaining obedient members of the true church of Christ. It is precisely because the Lord God is indeed willing to help those who are in union with His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what else is the promise of uh, the Almighty God to the members of the true church introduced uh, by the Bible? Well, if our friends notice, according to the Apostle Paul, the Lord, He is coming soon. And what will happen on the day when our Lord Jesus Christ comes? Well, aside from uh, granting His disciples the grace of salvation and eternal life, on that day, all the difficulties, all the problems, all the suffering that a disciple, a true follower of the Lord Jesus Christ had to go through in this life, all these things, they're going to end. In view of this, what is the assurance of the Lord God to the members of the true church 
who are indeed obedient to His will, to His commandments, despite the fact that they have to suffer difficulties in this life. Again, we go back to the testimony of the Apostle Peter. First Peter, dear friends, chapter 5, verse 10, But after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace who calls you to share His eternal glory in union with Christ will Himself perfect you and give you firmness, strength, and a sure foundation. Friends, what is the Lord God's promise to those who are obedient to His will? Well, He Himself will perfect them, give them firmness, give them strength, as well as a sure foundation. Now, what is the equivalent of all this, dear friends? Such people will become stronger in the faith. They will inherit eternal life in the holy city and will share His eternal glory in union with His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. That is, if they patiently endure all the sufferings they are going through in this life. That's right. Friends, shouldn't we make that all-important decision to be obedient to the gospel or to the will of the Lord God above all the things of this world? Or to give priority to finding and joining the true church introduced by the Holy Scriptures? Remember, by means of the true church built by our Lord Jesus Christ, we can find the solution. We can find the ultimate solution to the twin problems of death and judgment faced by all people. It is because through the church built and headed by our Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior will save people on the day of His return and grant the grace of eternal life in the Holy City. Join us now in a short prayer. Our most gracious and most compassionate Father in heaven. Yes, Father. From the bottom of our hearts, Father, we offer you our praises and thanksgivings. Yes, Father. For allowing us once again to be enlightened by means of your words recorded in the Holy Scriptures. Amen. May you please bless our hearts and souls, yes, Father. especially that of our friends and viewers, yes, Father. so that we may all realize the great importance as well as the necessity of finding the solution to the twin problems of death and judgment yes, by means of joining and remaining steadfast members of the true church yes, until the very end of our life. Amen. Lord Jesus, may you please speak to the Father in our behalf. Yes, Lord. Forgive us for all our sins and shortcomings yes, Lord. and cleanse us from all filthiness of the flesh. Amen. Father, once again, we come before you. We ask for all these graces and blessings yes, Father. only through the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.